Hi, good afternoon, everyone. We just want to welcome you and thank you for joining us today for another edition of our Franklin County Department of Job and Family Services Virtual Lunch and Learn Series. My name is Carmen Barnes. I'm an assistant director here at FCDJFS, and I'm excited to host and facilitate today's discussion on behalf of our Franklin County Commissioners, Kevin Boyce, John O'Grady, and Erica Crowley, as well as our agency leaders, Director Michelle Lindenboom and Chief Administrator Vivian Turner. Today's Lunch and Learn is focused on Franklin County Youth Summer Camps. We're joined by a pair of our community partners, Darlene Scheid from Community Development for All People and Joy Reyes from the Columbus Literacy Council. And they will highlight some of the engaging and educational activities for youth at Franklin County funded summer camps. We really want this to be an interactive dialogue. So we invite you to enter questions in the chat and we'll also be answering those questions throughout our discussion today. We know that summer is just around the corner and for a lot of working families that presents a challenge. Your questions are who's gonna watch our kids? How can we make sure that they're safe and that they're learning that they're also getting a chance to be kids for the summer? That's why Franklin County invests millions of dollars each year to support innovative out of school time youth programming for elementary and middle schoolers from traditional after school programs to our free summer day camp programs. Our overall mission is ensuring that our community partners can provide academic enrichment in a safe nurturing environment through personalized student plans. These programs also foster social emotional learning outcomes including increased self-confidence and self-esteem, promoting positive behavior, improved communication skills, and an enhanced ability to effectively interact with peers and adults. Altogether, Franklin County has committed over $10 million to funding year-round out-of-school time youth programming, providing opportunities for over 2,000 kids in after-school programs and an additional 1,800 plus in day camps in the summer. Tuition is free for families that meet income eligibility requirements, and we've partnered with about 27 different community organizations to operate these camps at dozens of sites across Franklin County. We're so happy to have Darlene and Joy joining us to talk about what families can expect um, from Franklin County summer camps this year and share a little bit about what makes their program special. So welcome to both of you. Yeah. Good. Let's get started with a few questions today. So why don't I get, I'll give each of you an opportunity to just kind of tell us a little bit about yourself and your organization. Joy, do you want to start off with that? Sure. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Joy Reyes. I'm the proud CEO of uh, Columbus Literacy Council, also known as CLC Works. And before I begin, I would like to just give a thank you to the entire Franklin County team, the commissioners, the team on site there, all the job and family services staff and to Carmen Barnes for hosting us today. We really appreciate your dedication to community development and education. Your efforts and your support are what make us eligible and capable of serving in the community. And we appreciate that. Um, personally, you know, I was born here in Ohio, but my roots come from West Virginia. My my siblings, my parents, my ancestors are from the coal fields. And when we look at our history and education, what really made a difference in my life was education and opportunity formed a pathway for me to change the trajectory of my life. So when I think about what we do in our summers and what we're doing and what drives my passion as the CEO, Part of it really is knowing I firsthand experienced how education and involvement in activities can really change someone's future. Just small things can make a huge impact. And this deep connection for me to education's transformative power is what really fuels my passion and my energy and my leadership role. And when we're hiring staff, it's what we really want to make certain comes across in our staff as well. So that when we're working with the youth and we're working with the children, we're able to keep them engaged and connected and, you know, forming new thoughts, helping the, the youth and their minds develop new, new pathways. That's just such an exciting piece of what our summer programs involve. And we're 
again, just really excited to be a part of this. And we're here to support the youth of Franklin County and making certain that each one of them are able to form their own stories about the summer. Great. Thank you, Joy. And thank you for mm -hmm. being with us. Darlene, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your organization? Sure thing. And I also would like to echo uh, Joy's appreciation and gratitude um, for Franklin County. Um, everyone at JFS, um, from the commissioners down to the folks that support our programs, are incredible partners um, in out-of-school time here in Franklin County and um, being able to, you know, be partners for almost a decade. Um, it really matters in investing in the future of our county. Um, and so thank you very much for the opportunity to be here and talk about um, All People CDF Freedom Schools. Uh, my name is Darlene Scheid and I serve as the Youth Development Director here at Community Development for All People and have uh, for the last decade. Uh, so we're a Southside anchor agency um, here in Columbus and uh, youth development is just a slice of all of the offerings that CD4AP um, has from um, being a part of the development of affordable housing to workforce development to um, our free store, which is like Goodwill, but everything is for free, um, to our All People's Fresh Market and our Thrive to Five program. Um, it really is important to us to accompany a family from birth all the way through life and make sure um, that they feel the community has um, surrounded them. And so youth development um, fits nicely into that. And um, our youth development programs are after school. Uh, so currently we're in that after school time. And then in the summer is our eight weeks, um, all people children's defense fund freedom school. Um, so we're located at Lincoln Park and Seaver elementaries here on the South side serving um, kindergarten through eighth grade scholars. Uh, so that's a little bit about what we do um, here on the South side. Great. Thank you for that, Darlene. And thanks again for being here. So your program is on the south side. That's right. Where, where about? Like which streets, what intersections? So we're on Parsons and Whittier is kind of where all the main things happen. Um, being school-based, we work with Columbus City Schools. And so Siebert um, is tucked in a little closer to Schiller Park um, right off of Whittier. And Lincoln Park is in the Vassar Village area. Um, we share a backyard with Barrick Rec Center. So we're mm -hmm. we're right there. Great. And Joy, where are the CLC um, summer camp locations this year? This year, our summer camp location is going to be at uh, Bryce and Chantry. So right off of Interstate 70. So we are far east. Um, we are probably one of the last couple of buildings that hit City of Columbus, but we're still distinctly Franklin County. Um, we have three sites that we'll be using, but they're all in our Chantry complex. So we have three separate buildings, but they're all right here. Uh, in that same location this year. Great. And Joy, tell us a little bit about, you know, the benefits to the youth and to the families of attending summer camps. Well, as you mentioned, and also as Darlene shared, you know, having camp uh, provides an opportunity for parents that are working. So while our day camp is just six hours, we provide that the camp itself runs nine to three so it provides an opportunity for parents to have a place to let their children be engaged while they're still conducting their work or their other activities. But more importantly, it means kids aren't sitting home for us. They're not sitting home on um, technology all day. Now, anybody that knows me knows I am a huge fan of technology. I believe in it. I am wholeheartedly supporting it. I want everyone to know how to use it. But I also believe there is nothing like play and especially for our kids and I believe that is one of the main reasons that summer camp is so important because kids need the opportunity to be supervised but to have play and with what we're trying to do with their overall development is be able to incorporate all of their learning pieces into fun and play and so with the staff that we've hired and with the structure that we had on our program, have on our program, we set up our program. It's called Marvel Us. And um, it's not marvelous, but it's Marvel Us. And it's kind of a play on words there. But what we're striving for is it's a superhero filled, fun packed, pow, bam, shazam summer. And every activity that they do, superheroes are embedded into it. But there's learning 
and all of that is is in there. And so the summer for us, you know, it's it's important. All of those things make up part of the reason, but it's the opportunity for our, our location is, I think we have five school districts that are in our zone. So it's kids from that might be neighbors, but don't go to school together. So they make new friends. Um, it gives them an opportunity to have supervised play. It's a safe place. It's They come to love the location, love the staff. It's a new way of learning. And so for us, you know, summer camps are are just really important for all of those reasons. And it's important for, for the families too, because most of our parents are single mothers. And when, when we have a single mother, she can be overwhelmed. She's trying to work. She's trying to do multiple things. And now school's out and the kids are at home for the summer and it, it can become very overwhelming. And knowing that we're there to support them through that process for me is very important. And since a lot of our students are our families that we work with, our new Americans as well, we also believe this is a way to keep the language learning going, both for the students as well as the programming that we offer for the parents on the side. So it's it's kind of summer camp is for the kids, but it reaches the whole community. Oh, well, that's great. It sounds like a great place to be for the summer as well. CLC, the place to be. Okay. <laughs> Darlene, tell us a little bit about Freedom Schools and, and what the benefits are for the youth who attend and for their families. Yeah, Freedom School, um, we're a part of a national model um, through Children's Defense Fund. Um, and so I think uh, the there are two words that I think of um, when I think about the long history of uh, Freedom School. Um, we're rooted in um, the Freedom Summers of 1964. That's where we get our pedagogy and that's where we get... Um, kind of the curriculum and, and the, the model that is um, community building. And so I think of opportunity and I think of community. Um, so our parents, our families, our scholars have an opportunity to build community together um, and, and connect and, and stay connected. Uh, so we have um, curriculum and activities that are all about community involvement and making a difference if you're five or 95 um, and how you can leverage your voice. And so um, it's an incredible opportunity to continue learning in, after, um, in, in those after school hours and those summertime hours. Um, but it's also um, a really beautiful way um, that we've seen over the years um, to connect further with our community. Um, so a lot of the, during a lot of the year, um, we are connected um, in the near South side, uh, but in the summer we connect with a small nonprofit as well to operate a third site um, in Marion uh, at the Marion Franklin um, Rec Center. And so South Side Kingdom of Hope, we connect with them in the summer and we run the same kind of programming uh, because we have that national model. Um, but we build community every summer. Uh, that's been pretty cool since 2012, we've been operating here. And uh, we've had whole families come through where the oldest started in kindergarten. Wow. And now um, that's kind of, I'm bearing the lead. Our success story is that this year we um, have hired as a servant leader intern, our adult staff, um, a former scholar. Um, and so scholars have the opportunity to see themselves as leaders and continue to inspire one another through that intergenerational leadership. Um, and that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. So no matter what happens throughout their life, they might have moved to the West side or gone to Linden or live in Groveport now, but if they're in Franklin County, they can always come back and we see them come back. Um, year after year, our scholars reconnect in community at Freedom School. Um, and so not only are they learning and engaging their minds and learning how they can be curious in their, in their own community areas, um, but they're reconnecting and building relationships that may last them their entire lifetime. And that's happening at Freedom Schools. Wow, that's that's exciting. That's huge. Good. So so what would a typical day look like for um, one of the youth who are attending the Freedom Schools? Sure. So for us, um, our scholars come in and we have breakfast uh, right away if they if they choose. Um, and the cool thing about every um, CDF Freedom School is that at 8.30, if you're on the East Coast, no matter where you are, if you are a CDF Freedom School, we start with Harambe, uh, which is a Swahili word for let's pull together. And it's kind of like a 30-minute 
pep rally, essentially, uh, allows us to start our day off right. We have a really loud guest, maybe like Miss Carmen, would come in or a parent or someone who works at Kroger or anyone from the community to share a read aloud book um, and answer questions. The scholars have a chance to have face to face with that adult, ask them questions about their careers or what their favorite color is or anything like that. Then we have a motivational song, including movements and cheers and chants. Um, it's all surrounded around positivity and I can, and I can make a difference. Um, a chance for scholars to recognize one another. Then we have a moment of silence, getting us ready for learning. And then the bulk of our day is three hours in the morning, um, utilizing our integrated reading curriculum. And so it's steeped in literacy activities. We're reading books each day that are new and fresh. Um, our curriculum looks and sounds and feels like the culture that is um, on the South side. So our kids see themselves in books and in situations. Um, and so we read the books early in the morning. And then um, after our morning energizer, they're coming back to do social justice activities, um, conflict resolution activities, social emotional development that are all related to that book and, and the theme around I Can Make a Difference. Um, then we have a quick lunch and then we have afternoon activities that might be garden club or fitness and nutrition club um, or a STEM camp or any number of things um, or exciting thing we're doing this year is um, our scholars are doing a service activity with a group called Seeds of Hope. So our scholars are learning uh, around different um, community service opportunities. Um, and then they'll continue at one of our sites. Um, last year, we started a community garden here on Parsons Avenue. They'll continue that development of the, the community garden. Um, and they have established one at their site at Seabert. So there's going to be a learning garden that our scholars have designed and are about to plant and they'll tend. Uh, so those are afternoon activities. Um, and then every Friday, we take a field trip in the community, whether we're going to COSI um, or we go to Ohio State and have a camp visit um, or we go over to Columbus State. Um, the idea of every Friday field trip is to expand our scholars' horizons and allow them to find something that might inspire them um, for their future. That sounds exciting. That yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've been a guest at, at your school and Harambe was something I thought, oh, I need that every day at work. We should like, we should all do this every yeah, day. It's a great way to start your morning. That way. <laughs> yeah, it's a great way to start your morning. <laughs> it is. It is. It sounds like there's something for every youth, no matter kind of what your interest areas are. Absolutely. Joy, what about Marvel S? What's a day in What's a day like at Marvel S? Well, as Darlene shared, it's it's our structure is very similar. You know, we start with bringing them in in the mornings. We give breakfast. We get them ready for their day. We do a lot of uh, our first thing in the morning that we do. We we do mindfulness uh, and stretching. So mm -hmm. we call them Spider Man stretches um, in the morning. So again, we keep everything on the superhero theme, but the activities they're doing is, is again very similar to what Darlene shared we do that and then we do a joint reading session where someone is reading a book to them and then from there activities are based throughout the day because we have around 100 youth in the three facilities the day people run on a rotation so that we can run the same segments but group a b and c will rotate between them so different youth might start next on crafts and activities other youth might go to physical activity but all of those components are built into the day um, and then there's sections where youth do get to choose which section they want one of the things that you know Darlene shared and it is so true for CLC's programming as well reading is integrated throughout everything that we're doing all day long we integrate reading and math so even when they're doing for example, I know one of the activities I love to always watch are relay races. There, there's teams and they're doing a physical, very, very physical activity, but they either have to, before they can pass the baton, they have to read a card and follow the three steps that it says, or they throw some dice that have numbers on them and they do a mathematical calculation before they can pass the baton and move on. So it's a fun way to keep it integrated and keep it at the forefront of what they're doing, but still let them do some of these other activities. So the day, very structured for each team, but you'll have three or four separate groups moving throughout the day just to keep our teams small. Lunch, um, 
lunch is a big deal this year. We are trying um, something new for our team. We are doing hydroponic uh, gardening. Oh. So we've tried the outside gardening and it just didn't work well. So we are working on establishing a partnership with a company in Cincinnati. But what we want, we definitely are doing this. So the youth are going to be learning how to grow them potentially in gardens that they can then take home with them um, and grow their own their own food. And hopefully by, we think about week four, there should be something for them to eat from the garden that they're growing. So we're excited about that. But a day, very structured, reading and math are integrated throughout the day. And then an assortment of other activities from music to soccer, to just general play. I love the variety for both of you all's programs. It just, it feels like a youth could just kind of get in where they fit in and, and be constantly learning in this fun environment. Um, which is great. So both, Joy, I think you may have mentioned it earlier, but talk to talk to parents about, you know, the challenges around summer learning loss and how, you know, camps can really address that. Well, before I had a child, I wasn't really sure, you know, what are they saying summer learning loss? If they're learning this through the school year, my kid, it's just a couple of months, they're not going to really lose what they've gained. And what you realize is it's the same for us. If we're not practicing something on a day-to-day -day basis, we're not as in tune with it. Um, think about, you know, when we went through school, we might've known the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, now, you know, just ask somebody to write that down. Well, what is this and how do we do it? Who knows anymore? The same thing's true for our little ones. You know, they're going through school. They're really working on their essential skills, their math and their reading skills. And what happens over the summer is the brain just kind of zones out. And unless we are intentional in working to keep at the forefront these skills, they will drop back. May, they may not lose a grade level, but they might drop a couple of months. They might forget some of the new words they learned at the end of the school year. And it's really important for their progress that they can maintain their attentiveness, that the brain can keep functioning on those levels, that we're learning to read, we're progressing in reading, we're maintaining that skill. It, the summer slide, you know, is, is what it's often referred to, but it is summer learning loss. It is a real thing. It does happen. And summer camps are an absolutely amazing way to keep your child on target, on track, and moving, not just staying steady, but moving forward. Um, you know, I think with with the reading that Darlene has shared, and I know with the structure that we have, with those things purposefully planned, youth tend to finish the summer a little ahead of how they are when they come into the summer. And that's what we really want to see. At CLC, we um, we use the program I Excel. It's what we use with our partner schools. And so we actually keep them tracked and moving forward with that piece of technology that helps us, you know, just ensure that we're on track with each child receiving exactly what they need for their individualized sessions and reading. Um, but summer camp does address that and it can address the math as well, just to keep your brain exercising in those ways. That's great. That's very helpful. Darlene, any other thoughts on that? Yeah, I love um, what Joy said about practicing. Um, we are constantly practicing um, even just the structure of the day, right? And in the past, um, educators in the schools where our scholars participate in Freedom School have said, oh, these scholars were ready. Their fall tests are way better than their spring tests. Um, and it's that practice, it's that rhythm of being in a structured environment. Um, that, you know, the whole family is getting ready for freedom school every day, right? And in the morning and um, and our summer programs look like a school day and that's intentional. Uh, and so it's not only um, that we're practicing our literacy skills, our math skills, it's also that we're practicing our, you know, daily schedule as a family mm -hmm. and we're getting uh, quality sleep in the summer and our brain has a has a, a chance to get into that REM cycle right and we're getting that, that those hours because summer camps have worn them out <laughs> and, yes. and they've been able to exercise their brains and their bodies in a way that's really productive um and so I think that that um, that practice is really um, important and and the opportunity for summer camps to um, 
look at schooling and education a little differently, right? We're out of school time for a reason because all of us have a little bit of a different take on how to educate a scholar. Uh, and for us, we use that language really intentionally um, because we know that we're not professionals in reading fluency and getting vocab specific. Um, we're not pretending to be, but we are experts in bringing education alive and making it really fun for kids. So that sparks their curiosity and it inspires them to go and be a scholar for the rest of their life. And so that summer is more practice uh, for us to you know, widen their horizons and bring some really cool interests outside of the classroom. Um, my favorite thing in the summer is to help a scholar find like what's the thing that they love to read. And when they come in saying, I'm not going to read, we have a thing called drop everything and read deer time. And um, I love when a scholar on week one is like, no, that's 15 minutes. I'm going to sit here and not do anything. And then by week eight, they're like, where's that graphic novel? And I need to finish this. And I have my own bookmark. Um, those are pretty cool things that that we practice at summer. That is cool. Thank you. You kind of teased us a little earlier yeah. and you were sharing a success story about one of the families who've attended your summer camp in the past. So tell us a little more. Yeah. Tell us um, a little more about that. I'm just really proud of this uh, soon to be servant leader intern. That's our summer staff. Um, she entered our program um, nine years ago as a scholar herself. Um, and came through the whole program. Um, most of our scholars we see, if they stay in Franklin County, we see them from kindergarten all the way up to eighth grade. Um, once they get to high school, they have a chance to come get their graduation service hours with us um, as a junior servant leader intern. So that's an assistant facilitator, um, volunteer in the classroom, help set up lunch and those kind of things, exercising a little bit of those leadership skills um, and stay connected to Freedom School. So what we're seeing is scholars who are really connected Connected to that community want to continue to give back and figure out a way to stay connected. Um, and so that's just a natural thing that has grown our junior servant leader intern program. Um, and our hope is to grow leaders that want to come back and, and bring their leaderships and facilitation skills to our scholars. And it's happening for the first time this year. So um, I'm really excited about that. We've had this whole family um, of scholars for uh, since 2015. So this will be their 10th summer with us. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and, and from the baby all the way up uh, to the oldest have all been scholars. And they're example of just one family. You know, we have um, many other families who have come through as the oldest was a little and now everyone has come through. And some families, the little ones weren't even there when the, <laughs> all this started. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's an incredible opportunity for us to be so connected with um, our families in the community, you know, it's January and I'm walking in Kroger and I see families like, what is Freedom School signups? Um, <laughs> because they really, um, they really want to be a part of it. And it's that important to their family um, life in the summer. Um, so I think that's our greatest success is the community that we have built um, here and that folks want to continue to engage. Um, and our parents are as involved as our scholars. We have weekly parent meetings um, and orient family orientation nights and family. Um, we have a day of social action, which usually is in the evening. Um, and then we have a end of, end of summer finale. Um, and when I say, you know, we might have a site that has 80 scholars and then there are hundreds of people that come to finale. I am not kidding. Um, it is a family <laughs> affair, the whole thing. So it's a pretty awesome. It's a pretty awesome thing. I would say that's our largest success story um, is just yeah. being able to be connected with families throughout their entire um, the iteration from littles all the way to into their teenage years. Yeah, that's huge. It just so speaks to the impact of your programming on the youth and their families. That's mm -hmm. exciting. Good. Yeah. Joy, what about Marvel Us? Share some success stories from the past. With oh, us. oh, wow. I think uh, one of the the greatest was, um, you know, as I mentioned, we work with a lot of new Americans. So we had Mia come in and um, her family speaks Spanish. She speaks Spanish and she's learning English. And um, she kind of was off to herself because our summer camp is filled with we probably have 35 different languages that get oh. spoken in summer camps. Wow. So, um, you know, it's, it's a, across, 
across the board. Some summers more one than the other, but it, it's it's a lot of different languages that can be represented there. And so she's in camp, but she's kind of off to herself. And she found her stride with uh, connecting in the physical fitness activities that we're doing. Mm -hmm. So it was really, she liked gymnastics and, you know, she was, it was just her thing. And our uh, instructor teacher was able to help her be a leader during those times. And so just learning the words to those things in English helped her. Well, by the time we're finished with the summer, she was able to speak some in English. She was working with English. But most importantly for her, what we felt the biggest success for her was she had made connections with other youth. She was no longer kind of standing off by herself. She had formed friendships. And, you know, we say that that's always an easy thing for kids to do. Kids are kids. They can form friendships. Yes, they can. But when they have these barriers that present like language, she wasn't sure where she was going to fit in. And you could just see this timid child by the end of the summer. She, she was excited to be there. She was engaged and that the staff had really found the key to helping her be engaged. They found her strength and mm -hmm. helped her be a leader in that area, just, you know, just in that area, but it helped her overcome hurdles and barriers that she had on other sides. And, you know, I think we see that frequently with what they're doing in camp where the staff really work hard to find the students that need the most help yeah. and help bring something out in them. Um, we had a, a youth last summer, last summer we partnered with schools and we had a, a youth, his name was uh, My Wayne. And My Wayne was just an amazing child. But if he didn't like something, he would just have, a, a, a temper tantrum and our staff was able also to put him in a leadership role brought him alongside and said look now you're going to be setting an example for everyone and his parents have already reached back out they're interested in having them come back to camp this summer because by having him understand that his role he wasn't just a participant he was a leader and, you know, I think as Darlene shared that servant leadership, but instilling that in the youth, that they are and can be and should look at themselves as leaders is a key part of successes that happen in summer camp. It's a, it's a key place where, you know, our ratios are smaller than the average classroom. So our staff have the time to be intentional and to help pull out of the youth those skills and abilities and show them in a much smaller setting than what our teachers have in the classrooms. And, you know, as Darlene shared, we are not teaching experts. We are there to provide an alternate pathway for mm -hmm. youth to express themselves, to learn how. And in addition to that, we're throwing in education as a core of what we're doing, but they're learning it in a fun way. And I think that is one of the things that makes the successes when they come out to be so, so great. As um, we were sharing, I was reminded, we just had one of our previous Marvelous alums. She went through Marvelous. She went through uh, one of our programs that we have for AMP for our 16 to 18 year olds. She just graduated from Otterbein University. Wow. And, you know, it is, it's a huge success when uh, you go to see this and it's like, wow, we cannot believe you're doing, you know, you, you've just done so well. We are so proud of them and seeing their success. But I think, you know, the biggest success and, you know, Darlene, this is hearing about your organization and how you all function is amazing because that would be what I would say with CLC as well. It's building the community. It's the community of individuals that we are working with that stay connected with us. It's the longitudinal impact that we're able to see over time that when you're asking, you know, is there a success story? Well, yeah, I can show you this child improved on their academics and, you know, I'm 87% improved in math. Um, all of the students went back into school and they're right at the same level. And we can give story after story after story about that over the summer. But I think the biggest impact that summer camps make and the investment that the county is making into the summer camps and how this really helps is the longitudinal impact. 
It's making an impact, not just this summer, not just over after school time, but in five years, you're having those youth, darling, come back into your camp and they're setting an example for others. They're taking what they learned in summer camp and they're now ready to give back. And I think, honestly, I think that is a huge success yeah. for, I would say almost all of our out of school time programming would experience that across Franklin County and being able to really um, have those success stories because that's saying we're not just impacting right now. Right. As Darlene, you shared, you got 80 kids, but you might have hundreds come. That's amazing because what's happening is the community is also recognizing the success of the program. The community is identifying with it. And when the community is able to identify with the success that a program is having, that amplifies what happens this summer. Because this summer, you're not only going to have the parents putting the children here and, you know, we're trying to provide parent engagement and support, but we're able then to say, well, yes, parents, this works. And here's all the other testimonies that can identify with it. And when they come together as community, I think, I think those are some of the best success stories that families can look at is the longitudinal impact. I would agree. I would agree. You all, you all and the other 25 community partners that we have that provide summer camp um, are providing so much more than what I think, you know, as the community thinks of summer camp, right? Mm -hmm. So the opportunity for you to have a safe place to be cannot, you know, cannot be undersold. It's huge. It's valuable. It's so necessary. But the commitment and the passion that you all both have shown and just kind of planning the curriculum and planning just a variety of different ways for youth to um, be engaged this summer in summer camp and, and to learn and to play and to grow and to do a little bit of you know agriculture and everything that you yeah. offer is, is a, a value that to Joy's point, we'll see just continually um, as they grow and as they develop over their years. So thank you. Thank you both um, for offering that as well as again, thank you to the other 25 um, some community partners that we have that will be providing that service. How can families get enrolled in your program? Well, I'll take that we, first. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, so you go to our website. Um, it is for all people, the number for all people.org. There is a little toggle down to youth development and on our page, um, uh, probably a little bit uh, down it says enroll your scholar now uh, and that's a hyperlink to our application and once parents complete that we get in touch with them and let them know when the next parent orientation is um, and most of the um, I, I think actually all the information that we require um, is on the application link so we already have it um, once we meet with uh, parents in that orientation time um, that's to so that they understand what the parent commitment is and the freedom school calendar and how, um, you know, the day is going to work. Um, we like to have those one-on-one -on -one meetings, uh, so that parents can see who's going to be with their scholar every single day. Um, and we make that initial connection outside of day one. Uh, and so it's really important for us that process. Um, but online, like I said, um, uh, for all people.org, the youth development tab, and you can enroll your scholar there. Excellent. And what about Marvelous Joy? online at clcworks.org and you can enroll there and just as Darlene shared we also do parent orientations and engagement pre-camp um, that is important we want to ensure parents understand expectations at camp what we are and how it works and once we fill out that form online essentially we have the information we need to confirm eligibility and to move forward with enrolling them in, in the summer great that is great this has been a lot of fun for me, um, just hearing a lot about, about the work that you all are doing. Is there anything else that you all wanted to share with families or about your program? I would say everyone is welcome. Come on down. <laughs> awesome. Great. I would just, I would reiterate that as well. We're, we're open. We still have space available. So we are looking for a few more campers to join us this summer. Nice. And we are ready for a fun-filled, action-packed, learning, exciting, 
engaging, uh, fun time. Exciting. That's great. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. So I hope all of our viewers have had a chance to learn something. I know I did. I want to thank you both, um, Darlene and Joy, for joining us and engaging with us this afternoon. And thank you for everyone else who took the time um, out of your workday and afternoon to join in our discussion. So as a reminder, um, this Lunch and Learn is recorded. So if you missed any part of it, of it or if you know of someone who couldn't tune in, please send them right here to our Facebook page or share the link. Uh, to learn more about Franklin County funded summer care, summer camps, and visit our summer youth homepage, um, you can go to jfs.franklincountyohio.gov slash summer. Again, that's jfs.franklincountyohio.gov slash summer. And there we have a list of contact information for all of our funded community partners who still have open slots. Um, so act fast, as Joy says, she may have a few slots, but um, slots are filling up quickly. So we do want you to take advantage of that today um, to, if you are interested in having your youth get enrolled in a summer camp. Again, that's jfs.franklincountyohio.gov slash summer. And we'll share that link in the chat if we, if we are able to do that. Be sure to join us in a few weeks as we start talking to you about opportunities for high schoolers and young adults through our Ready to Earn Paid Summer Work Experience Program. So just keep an eye out for those details. Again, thank you all for joining us today and have a great day. I wanna check and just make sure that um, we didn't have any additional questions in the chat. I think we are clear. So Joy and Darlene, thank you both. And thanks to everyone who tuned in with us today. Have a great afternoon. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah.